Everybody, this is the CT Sports Talent Show. My name is Christopher Saunders, and I'm pleased to have on the newly assistant coach for Bryant, uh, Brendan Phelps. And if that name sounds familiar, his father, a great coach at the high school level, coaches at St. Paul. Also, Brendan was with Berlin for a short time, but did fantastic things with the program. Also, Brendan played way back when some basketball, but I'm sure we'll get into that. He's a returning guest as well on the CT uh, Sports, uh, sports rather, Talent Show. Brendan, I appreciate you coming on again. You got it, Chris. I, I'm I'm uh, always happy to sit down with you. I'm humbled that you, you you'd ask me to to be back, and uh, I'm excited to talk to you, man. You know, it, it's one thing to to see somebody that I know be able to have an opportunity to progress in their career. It's another thing when it's somebody that I know personally and have gotten to know you basically since COVID. I remember when I first had you, we were I think you were at Post at that time as well, and we were just kind of spitballing and talking basketball and such. And over the course of the years that I've known you, man, seeing you getting this Brian job does not surprise me by any means because of the intellect that you have and just the love you have for basketball. <laughs> I appreciate that, uh, Chris. It's yeah, no, that's it's funny. You So you're right. It was COVID. So I remember sitting in my office at Post and I think I was the only person in the building. <laughs> it was perfect. I think I'd gone there I, like so that my kids wouldn't bother me. Uh, but yeah, man, it's 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 been. Um, it's been a long, it's been a, it's been a long road. It's, it's, it's been a long grind. It's been a, a lot of work and a, and a lot of luck. Um, it's, you know, and like I had said to you before we came on, like, I'm still, it's still very new. I'm still trying to wrap my head around all of it. It's been pretty overwhelming, but I'm excited. And, uh, it's, there's definitely a degree of, of, uh, you know, uh, of, accomplishment I guess for lack of a better word you know I, it, it like I said it, it's been a it's been a long journey for me you know a lot of times typically in, in journeys right they're all not the same and I know most times and again a lot of it has to do with families and such where if you're a college coach and I've seen this in all sports at the high school level when they drop down from the college ranks to the high school ranks a lot of times they stay for various reasons right because of family because of comfortability or just because the travel is a lot right but you had an opportunity to be able to do that. Obviously, like you said, right place, right time. You'll talk about how the Brian situation happened. But, um, you know, just kind of, you know, if you can just discuss that a little bit as far as going from college to high school and now not just college, but division one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, you know, my transition from college back to high school you know, I, I had had some other interviews and I had opportunities when I was at post and I was very fortunate, I, you know, coach Koontz, who you've had on, I think, mm -hmm. you know, he was, he, he was remarkable for me um, in, in trying to advance me in the business. So I had plenty, I had a bunch of opportunities. I, I was a finalist for, you know, uh, plenty of other jobs and it just didn't work out, you know, for whatever reason during different years. And, you know, COVID was one of those years. And, but I had, you know, I had some opportunities and, um, you know, my position at post had changed a little bit my last year. And, you know, it, it was, I was kind of put in a position where I, you know, I had to, I had to either find something else, or I probably wasn't going to be feasible for me to go back there. And when I didn't find anything else, I started looking at high school jobs and, you know, I had felt like, you know, 17 years, you know, I'd, I'd put into this pursuit of, of coaching in college and eventually trying to get to the division one level. And, you know, I have two young kids and, and, and I have a wife who is, who's, she's been an absolute rock star and, you know, none of this ever happens if she's not who she is at home. But I felt like I owed my family, you know, me, I guess, to a degree. So, I had kind of come to, to peace with that. And I was, I was excited about being a head coach. I was excited about having my own program. Uh, the people at Berlin were, were outstanding. Um, my athletic director, Dave Frankelangia is like, he was, he's one of the best ADs I've, I've worked for college or high school. And he's just a solid dude. He's like my kind of guy, mm -hmm. super supportive. The administration there, you know, it was outstanding too. So I was very fortunate. They, they welcomed me, they accepted me, they, they gave me a great opportunity. And, you know, my plan at that point in time was to, to establish something there and, and create a, a culture and, and, uh, you know, make, you know, put basketball on the same tier as, as their other uh, uh, elite sports. And I thought we built a great foundation in doing that. 
and you know the Bryant thing came up and I it wasn't anything that I was I was hunting for it kind of found me and as it developed and as conversations were had it just ended up being a too good of an opportunity to pass but um you know I I was but yeah that that transition kind of happened organically for me mm-hmm. um and, you know, never was there a feeling of I got to get out of college, I want to go coach high school, nor was there a feeling of I got to get out of high school and go back to college. It all kind of happened very naturally. Um, but I'm very, you know, and and I'll, I'll cut this long winded answer in a second. But I, I do want to reiterate again, like, I'm very, very fortunate. And I'm very thankful for what the opportunity that that Berlin gave me um and those kids they bought in man like we competed every night with you know with the ccc and we battled and and i think if you asked anybody who was was close to our program they would tell you that you know i was a hundred percent in you know we we were we were building something we were laying a foundation um but i met with those kids on wednesday night and you know, I, I told them kind of the situation and I, I reminded them about the important stuff that we had been working on and that we've been building. And none of that was the basketball philosophy. So the X's and O's and the the, 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 the philosophical stuff, basketball wise, that can always change. But what we are trying to build and that foundation of a culture, you know, they can continue that. And I kind of reminded them of that. And, and I'm excited to watch them as they continue to go with whoever it is that ends up, um, you know, taking over there. Was there anything that you learned about yourself when you went to Berlin that maybe you didn't realize when you were at post and now that you're going off to Bryant, you will take with you? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great question. And like the, 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 the easiest thing was I learned that I could like run my own program. I, I, you know, I didn't have doubts, but you know, I had been a head coach and I had an AAU thing and I'd ran an AAU club, but you know, there's different, there's different vibes to, to different things. So to, to have an opportunity to have my own program and, and have, you know, the, the a freshman JV and, and, and establish all that stuff. And, you know, it, it, it reiterated to me, it gave me just kind of that extra little bit of, confidence like yeah man like you you can do this like you could run your own program and I learned a lot about you know um I learned a lot about who like how what I want out of you know my my experience as an assistant Hmm. I thought made me a great head coach because it allowed me to tell my assistants like listen these are the things that I want these are the things that I'm going to need these are the things so to be able to like be able to have that had that experience and then mm-hmm. know because of that what I would want made the transition with the new staff and all that really easier mm-hmm. um but but I kind of yeah like I guess the simple thing is like I I proved that you know I, I could run my own program and you know I could get people the kids to buy into what we were what we were preaching mm-hmm. um and then from like a basketball standpoint just like a you know the handling of people and you know as an assistant you handle people especially in college like that you know I had to handle different people but ultimately it's the head honcho it's the boss man that that really does everything else so um you know that was good to know too like I you know I'm the guy now that's got to deal with all the big picture problems or you know positives if there are you know so that was that was a good experience for me too I think to to kind of be able to take that in and, and, and learn from those, from those, um, experiences. You know, uh, obviously for people who may not even know, I I shouldn't say this is obvious. Your father coaching at St. Paul has for many, many, many years, obviously the run of, uh, state tournament appearances speaks for itself. Right. And I think it's awesome to be able to have him in the game, especially in the NVO as well. And being a part of St. Paul and, and speaking of him, And I don't know when you told him as far as when you took the job, and I'm sure he was, you told him at some point very quickly, but what was his reaction? Cause I'm sure he was like, he, like he is always with his players when they come back or when I've spoken with him, he is, he, he would rather see the players succeed in a multitude of ways before he talks about his own accomplishments. So I'm sure he was ecstatic for you, a former player, but also his son as well. Yeah, man. I mean, there's like, I've like, I mean, my dad 
has been literally the only person that's been on me with this journey from day one, you know, and that's not a slight to anybody else. I didn't know my wife when I started, you know, when I packed up my car one summer at 25 and traveled 12,000 miles around and worked every camp and whatever imaginable, like I didn't, I didn't know my wife and, you know, so my dad was the guy that I confided in when I was young. He, you know, I was 21, 22 years old. I just kind of finished hooping in college and he hired me and, you know, I told him like, eventually I want to, like, I want to be a college coach. I want to coach the highest level possible. I want to be a division one, you know, coach. And, you know, so he, he's the one who put me on to the first guy that I went and met with kind of in the grassroots business who gave me some opportunities early on. Mm -hmm. So that was a real special moment for me, like father, son, but also having worked for him for so long. Um, and his reaction was, you know, if you know, my dad, he's, he's a pretty emotional dude. Um, you know, and he wears his heart on his sleeve. And, uh, so I, I, I got the call and I actually drove to his office, which is not far from my house. And he was in a meeting and like, I can tell you that I go into my father's office. I can go in there a hundred times and he'd be in zero meetings. So I walk in and he's in a meeting. So I'm like, ah, oh, geez. So I left him a note. Uh, and I wrote on the note, a couple of things that had some choice words that probably are not for your audience, but that kind of left them this note. And uh, I, I left because I know, I know how long he'd be in that meeting for. So yeah. he ended up calling me back a few minutes later. He's like, are you kidding me? And I drove back and we had a moment and uh, it was special for us to share, you mm -hmm. know, cause he knows more than anybody, you know, the, the, the trip that I've been on. And he was the guy who told me, like, I remember, I remember one of my first experiences in grassroots basketball, I got in this gig, I was working for a company called Hoop Mountain. And, you know, the, the guy I still am in touch with today, and he's been a great mentor for me. But my first gig was, you know, I had to drive to a SUNY New York, like a SUNY school out in New York, like Western New York somewhere. And it was like a six hour drive. I remember I got up at like three in the morning. And, and I drove out there. And I was under the impression I was going to be like, you know, running this tournament, and I was gonna be doing all those things. I get there, I was the first one there nobody's around I waited around for like an hour finally some other guy comes in and eventually like the, the guy who was in charge comes he's like oh you're Brendan he's like oh yeah great thanks for helping out and I sold candy bars for seven hours in a lobby and at the end of the night the guy comes by he's like oh you can take off me and he hands me like 75 bucks for gas and I drove home another six hours and I remember I called my dad and I was like dude I don't like what I don't know what I just did, man. Like, I just like, this is wild. Like, and he said to me, and I'll never forget this. He said, Brendan, I, I don't know the right answer. And I don't know the best way to like, you know, to, to, to kind of lead you on this journey. He says, but what I do know is you're going to hear no a lot before you hear yes. And you just got to keep going. And like that, like that is stuck with me through everything. Just, you're going to hear no. So anytime when I walked out of an interview and I thought I nailed it and I was, you know, driving home and call my wife, I'm like, I thought it went great. And then a day later, I don't get the job. And then, you know, so all those different moments, I just kept telling myself, like, you're going to hear no's, you're going to hear no's, you're going to hear no's. You know, when I got hired at post, I told coach Coons, I was like, listen, I'll be loyal to you to the day I die. Cause you're the first guy who said yes. When coach Grasso hired me, I told him, I said, you, like, if you need me to dump a body, I'll dump the body. Like you're like, like you, you said yes to me, like, and I'm a soldier. I'm loyal like that. So, you know, we're, you know, in guys that have hired me have found that out real quick. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, it, <laughs> but it was like, I'll, I'll never forget that. Never forget that. You know, to, I think everyone's story is always unique. And like I said, that's awesome to hear about the relationship that you and your father have and have had for many, many years. And kind of, I think the no's before yes speaks in a multitude of ways. Goes playing days, coaching as well, like you said. And, you know, my next question was going to be as far as do you feel, you know, any sort of pressure on yourself because of obviously having this opportunity. I know that there'll be, you know, the family will be moving because of the distance and such, because you got to make sure you're there for them because they're vastly important. You've got kids, you've got a beautiful wife. Obviously you got to worry about your players as well. Um, 
do you feel like too that they'll like like how hard is it I guess Brendan I guess to ask you as far as the pressure aspect for yourself because you got to be able to enjoy it because you love this game you got to yeah. it. you know that's like that's a great question and I'm but I'm not going to give you a great answer that's and okay. it's like <laughs> so I, you know it's the old adage if you love what you do it doesn't feel like work right and and in my like my best years career wise like I didn't make any money like you know like but I loved going to work every day. You know, my first job at Post paid me six thousand dollars. I was a, I was a, I was a second assistant at a, at a low major division two, and I was making six grand. And I was working night shifts, like just trying to keep the lights on because I, you know, but I loved going to the office every day. So it, it, I don't feel a lot of pressure from the job mm -hmm. um, because I love to do the job. Specific to like the division one thing, you know, I, I don't feel any pressure. Because I revert back to, to to like what I tell my players, and you know, in 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 today's day and age, confidence is a big trigger word, right? Young high school kids, college kids, oh, confidence! Oh, he's got low, he's got no confidence. He's got his confidence. And I tell people all the time, like your confidence comes from your body of work. So if you're in the gym every day and you're you know putting in time and you're putting in the effort and you're now you go to play in the games and you miss a few shots, your confidence has to come from. I mean, I'm in the gym every day. Like I, I miss a couple of shots. This isn't a big deal. So for me, it, it's the same mindset. Like 18 years now I've put in yeah. to try to get to this level. Like I, I just have confidence in my body of work and in the thing, the sacrifices that I've made in 18 years, the, 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 you know, the different opportunities that I've experienced and, and everything I've tried to take from, mm -hmm. from anything that I've done. Like, so, you know, pressure like no like i i feel like i want to perform i want to do well obviously like i but i feel very confident in my ability because mm -hmm. of the time and effort and work that i've put in to get to this point you know what i mean no i think that's a you know that you know that that's the kind of answer that i think fits my question that i asked you perfectly and you know like i told you you know congratulations you know just about run out of time but you know Congratulations, Brendan, on being able to get the position with Bryant. That's awesome. Obviously, Connecticut kid doing Connecticut things. Not a kid anymore, but just speaking in terms of Connecticut, far, right? Far from it, man. <laughs> far from it. <laughs> but hey, man, seriously, I'm so happy for you. And, you know, have fun at Bryant and keep doing, you know, keep killing it, man. Seriously. I appreciate you, Chris. Thanks, man. I appreciate you. And I appreciate the conversation. Hopefully, uh, you know, your audience enjoys it. But um, continued success to you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. You're putting on for for kids you're putting on for for local coaches like it, it's 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 a great thing what you're doing for you know for connecticut and and uh and not just like the region like you i i see you like you expand you're getting people from all over the state mm -hmm. um so keep doing what you're doing man and continued success to you bro i appreciate it thank you so much brendan i'll wrap things up here in the ct sports talent show so until next time stay safe america ct stands for connecticut talent i'm our journey find them all do their shit everybody and be well